check this out. This is an Argo with a freaking awesome seat. Look at that. Dude. Pretty neat. Drop it in place. And it seems nice and secure. Pockets in the back. Cup holder. A bottle holder. A place of paper. Another cup. Put a beer can in there or something. Scotty mounts. That's neat. And uh, I'm gonna add some rod holders to this for sure. Oh, dude. Look at that bag in there. That's huge. And this way, when you put stuff in there, it's not going to disappear. Oh, that is really neat. Oh, you know, I've always been a fan of the Argo, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to love toting this thing around. Oh, look at that, too. The paddle holder has got two J-hooks now and a recess. That's going to hold that paddle really nice. I gotta find a place for this on the boat. <laughs> As I install these two rod holders, I'm gonna have a timer going. I have all my things worked out. I've got my screws over here and a little template and a marker and a Dremel. But I just wanna show you guys how easy it is to install some rod holders. But before I go uh, using a high speed tool, let me get my glasses. All right, ready? Start. drilled that. But no. Oh, that's it. Not too bad. Less than three minutes. Two rod holders. This kayak is now ready to catch some fish. Nice. When I'm out catching fish, one of the things that I'm sure to have is a pair of pliers. These old straps from Pelican High Drives would ensure that I had those pliers at hand whenever I needed them. I must say, personalizing a kayak is one of my favorite things to do when I first get them. Adding functional things is nice, but every once in a while, a little bit of bling is nice too. Now back to function. This bowl up front was going to be a great place to attach stuff, like my camera gear. And I'd still be able to put a handle on it if I needed it. In the back, I put a gear head mount from Scotty. You just twist it to put things in and out. And it fit right in there without modification. Now I had a place for lights and camera gear. In case I wanted to go out at night or film. Behind the seat, I had the standard soft cooler for my tackle and a new Pelican cooler that I'm looking forward to trying out. I could probably put drinks or fish in there. Next, it was time to worry about protecting the bottom. I had purposely drugged this kayak along the ground for a little while so that I could see where the scrape marks would be and where I should be putting the skater patch. It was easy peasy. All you do is press it on. Now I'm just going to put this thing out in the sun. UV rays cure this thing once it's out of the package. 
So you have a short period of time to just kind of press it on into place. It is suggested that you do it inside before you take it outside to cure. It gives you a little more working time. A hole in the keel almost destroyed my first kayak, and I have repaired it the hard way with a piece of HDPE plastic. This is so much easier. It's only been a few minutes, uh, but this thing is already feeling as hard as this plastic right here. Pretty amazing. I don't think it's quite cured. But uh, yeah, it's not soft, it's not pliable anymore. And it's supposed to be on there for good and should offer a bunch of protection now that it's lifted up slightly. And it's low profile enough, it won't affect the performance of the boat. So that's cool. I got a big one, I might do that same thing to the Bass Raider. For the time being, I was trying to figure out how I was going to drag all this stuff around with me on this long journey. And I did mean to drag it. Adding all this weight to the boat was not an option, so I was going to have to tow it. But this was a sit-inside kayak, so it would have to be upside down. I had just the solution. there you have it my pelican bass raider and the argo 100 xr all rigged up and now wrapped up ready to be towed behind contiki soon uh, it'll be time to untie the lines take the dock and stow it somewhere on board and head out for adventure it's crazy to think that i'm going to be going almost 6,000 miles and not turning back at any point along the way it's really nuts you can see here I got some tie points under the barbecue and over here I'll have a polypropylene line that just clips onto the handles and uh, this whole little thing ought to uh, follow us I think towing it is going to be the best way because Contiki is so loaded uh, there's no place for uh, any additional weight <laughs> plus it'll be easy once I get to a place to just you know launch I'll just have to scrape the bottom of the old Bass Raider every once in a while. Nothing I haven't done in the past. So yeah, look out for some live videos in the next couple of days because as soon as this front passes that's about to go across Florida, I'll be right behind it on my way for adventure. Mm, I'm excited. Hope to see you there. <laughs>